It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's superhero slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, but not really football, so let's talk it all out. I said we like Super Bowl, Mike. I think there was a missed opportunity <laughs> to say we like Super Bowl. But uh, my name is Chris. My name is Mike. And this week, we're prepping our snacks for the Super Bowl trailers, because uh, you got to be we eating had, good. If, if we had sound effects, Chris, this is where you'd put in the sound effect of Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom when don't, Link's cooking I don't know on his little those. pot, the little yep. the tinking and sizzling, but we don't do that here. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't even tell you what that sound was if I heard it. So, so we're good. Uh, but you got to eat. You got to eat good. Like we just said before the show, this is National Cheat Day for all eaters out there. Uh, mm-hmm. Disney is building this gaming universe and has dropped a pretty penny into it. We'll talk about that here uh, at the top of the show. The Knuckles trailer punches on the Paramount Plus. And Mike, is this a movie? No, it's a series. Apparently. It's a series, and we'll talk about it. The, the, I did. I didn't know it was coming either. It's fine. We're, we're gonna we're gonna discuss um, uh, the the Sonic franchise uh, a little bit and more. Yeah, and if you were all good little boys and girls last night, and happened to live underneath uh, Taylor Swift's private jet uh, flight path. <laughs> She may have stopped by in the middle of the night and given you an advanced pre-order of her album uh, under your stocking. It's Maybe not, if you I, left it out. <laughs> I'm checking all the torrent sites, Mike. I can't find a leak of it anywhere. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I just uh, I, I just wanted to talk about the Taylor Swift of it all just for a second because uh, this is the stuff I love about the Super Bowl in general. Because as as I alluded to in our intro. Not a big football fan, but I'm a big fanfare fan. That's why I get excited for things like the Olympics, even though I know nothing about track and field. I get excited about the Super Bowl because of all the other stuff going on around it. It's just exciting when people all come together for one thing. And then Taylor Swift is just an extra element that increases the energy around all of it. So um, it's just it's exciting. It just makes things a little bit more energetic. And Chris, I gotta imagine it's it's popping off over at your house because no, no. Uh, before we hit record, <laughs> yeah. you were describing all of the systems yeah. and objects you have in play over at your place. And on top of it all, your wife is a Taylor yep. Swift just a mega so, fan. So I just can't imagine the energy that's going to be coming from your finished basement here so, in mere hours. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and start with the Taylor Swift thing. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to tell you that right now, right at the top of the game. I'm going to drop the hard F because it's not, I, I don't, I don't care. And my wife knows I don't care. I'm like, anytime she tries to bring up, I'm like, I'm here for the trailers today. And, I, and I'm here to have people over. You had your Taylor Swift parties. You can have your listening parties. But but I, I don't even like sports, but keep it out of this. This is not for it. And so I don't need the updates. And I, don't, and I told her, I'm like, just not not today. Today is not the day for it. So uh, <laughs> I've, I've dropped that pretty hard because I'm like, I'm not, I'm not dealing with it. And I don't want all this coming up because we just had a Taylor Swift party last weekend. I'm like, no, no more. Uh, for it. I need a little bit of break. But on the other side of it, you're right. I have, uh, I was telling Mike, um, I've got a movie poster TV that is displaying the scores live updated. I showed Mike that. Uh, it's pretty rudimentary, but it's pretty cool that they someone was able to build that for me within like a day and, and run it. It sucks that the team colors this year are both just reds because all you get <laughs> yeah. is just red across the board. Um, but the, next to it on the other side of the basement is the, uh, the curtain lights that I have. Um, I've had Spider-Man, uh, running like the, the, the Atari Spider-Man kind of running in there for mm-hmm. like a week and a half now, two weeks. Um, but now it's, it's flashing between the two teams logos. Mike, I'll send you a photo video of that later. Got the outside lights ready to go. I've got the TVs loaded with Paramount plus ready to watch the game already logged in, checked it out. So we'll be good to go. And I also said, I've got um uh, the uh, the crock one crock pot cooking meatballs upstairs another one getting ready for Velveeta and I got the wings thawing out ready to rock and roll today because I I this is I don't care I'm going to mix it all on the plates Mike everything's coming out today for for food so um pretty pretty excited overall but um yeah it's it's been uh, the, the I would, I would say on the, on the flip side to to your point the energy is good today because I've been making food I've been in the kitchen all day uh so I think that energy is is coming through pretty 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 good for me so yeah uh, we'll do that. Uh, yeah 
obviously we're expecting uh, trailers at the Super Bowl, as Chris alluded to. Yep. Uh, we're recording this uh, hours before the game starts. So uh, <laughs> tune in next week on our show to get the rundown of all the trailers. Uh, we'll let all of the the immediate hot takes sizzle out, yep. and then we'll come in triumphant, With stepping over the corpses of people takes. who had, <laughs> yes, who people have had all the wrong opinions, and we'll come in and we'll analyze the whole uh, battlefield and ground play and everything yeah. that happened afterwards. You know, basically, it's a good time to see what floated and what sank. Right. You know, if it's not worth talking about, we're not going to talk about it I, uh, next week. And I think one thing that we both agreed on, you know, a lot of companies drop their big game spots before the big game. Um, I've not seen a lot of that this year, I'm going to be honest, but I've avoided what few I did see kind of coming out. I'm like, I don't need to see um, Kate McKinnon eating mayonnaise uh, simply because that's like the the title of the article. So I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to see that yet. Let me watch it live when you play it four times to me during the super bowl uh but, yeah exactly. but it's exciting but yeah overall i'm pretty pretty good mike and you uh let's just come in okay so that was my topic was the super bowl say super bowl 58 um 49ers versus the chiefs i believe i'm looking at my yes, logos it looks, like, it looks like what they look like over there um so that is going on and we'll talk like one there's one guaranteed trailer i think a couple other maybe small teasers but we'll we'll talk about that later mike you've been watching something and i think You've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure, unless you just finished it for the first time. No, I, I've, I haven't brought this up. Uh, we finally finished watching it this weekend. It's a quick eight-episode binge. You could knock it out, all out in one sitting if you kind of started in the early afternoon, and that is Amazon slash Freebies Jury Duty. I swear which... you brought this. I've never heard of the show, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure you've talked about it on the show before. Oh, this this show's great, Chris. I think you, uh, anyone yep. would love it. This has this has broad, hilarious appeal to it mm -hmm. because this is a TV show uh, about a small documentary crew that is getting unprecedented access to um, film a jury as it uh, as it uh, deliberates a case in a uh, in a in a real courtroom. But the catch is. Every single person involved is an actor, yeah. except for one single real person on the jury who has no idea that everything is being Truman showed around him. It is so funny. It is hilarious. Uh, everything about it is just so well thought out and fun. And it feels like I'm describing like one big gigantic prank show, but that is not the spirit of it. Like... A uh, prank show, you're thinking something like punked. This is like the great British baking show of like punked in a way of like where everyone's nice and uplifting. You know, they try to put the normal person through these obscene scenarios, but they never take it too far because the goal is for this person to not get yeah. wise. And a, and a great way to key this into the show, especially since we just briefly mentioned um, uh, Sonic at the top of the show with Knuckles is uh, James Marsden plays himself in this TV show as an actor who get call who gets called in for jury duty, and he obviously doesn't want to be there because he's an actor. He thinks he's going to be a distraction, he and he plays this uh, this heightened, douchey version of himself. And the great part about it is, is the real person like when he first sees when he first sees James Marsden, he's like, oh man, that person. Why does that person look familiar? And then they set up the scenario where somebody in the waiting room wants a picture with them and that confirms that he's famous so they they strike up kind of like this friendship but they're always trying to test it by making James Marsden the douchiest person on the planet so it's just so funny uh James Marsden's roles pop up because he's always talking about his work and how famous he is to all of these like jurors it's it's so funny you gotta go watch this. It's great. It's it's free because it's on Amazon Freebie. So you, there's commercials attached to it. No matter you pay Amazon that extra like three or four bucks a month, whatever they're trying to get out of you now. Uh, but yeah, go watch Jury Duty. It's so satisfying. It's so fun. Uh, yeah. You'll have a great time. And and I, and I know I've looked this up before, but what was interesting to me when I did it was like this show. Obviously, it's it's like. Um, it's like it's reality TV essentially, right? But like, there's one person who doesn't yeah. know is in there. Um, but there's also everything else around it is scripted. But like, they filmed this in 17 days, 
Like, it was a very, very small shoot because you can't drag out, like, a real... Like, they're not stopping and setting up stuff, right? Like, for uh, uh, to be on jury duty, you have to be there consistently, right? So, to, yeah. to give away, they filmed it in, like, 17 days. I'm like, that is just wild. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a re- it's a real high-wire act, too. Because, you know, if they were only filming for a couple of days and then the guy gets wise, you know, and, like you know, sees like a hidden camera because they know that there's cameras around because of this documentary crew. But what they don't know is there's so many more hidden cameras. So if he was to stumble across, you know, the real thing, if he, if he sees like a script laying around somewhere, you know, the whole, the whole thing is kaput. So they, they leave a lot of room towards the end of the season to show you a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and Mm -hmm. how, how tricky it was. If you're familiar with the show Parks and Rec, there's a character on that show uh, called Sewage Joe. He's an actor that uh, works in sanitation. And if you're a fan of Parks and Rec, you can identify this guy from like a mile away because he's so unique looking. He's tall. He has kind of like scraggly facial hair and he has a kind of a unique looking face. Well, they cast him in this show as one of the jurors and they found out very early on in the process that the real, the real juror uh, loves Parks and Rec. So the second they found that out, they didn't know that ahead of time. They cut all of um for the I don't remember the actor, but they cut Sewage Joe's all of his roles and they moved him to sit on the opposite end of the juror box and they had to minimize him because like, oh, they they know who this guy is and we can't feasibly have two actors called for jury duty at the same time. It would just be a little too much. So yeah, they're do they're doing all this behind the scenes stuff. Go watch jury duty, it's great. Only eight episodes. You can like knock it out in probably like four hours or something. But uh, yeah, yeah. If, episodes, if you don't watch, yeah. yeah, if you don't like watching uh, the Super Bowl, you know, I'd say that's a good replacement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you're not listening to this before the Super Bowl, afterwards, it's still something you do. Because if yeah. you had not told me about this, someone else has told me about this and talked about it f- to death last year. And I'm like that. I know I'm very familiar with the show. That's why I'm like, I swear it was you, but maybe it was somebody else. But that's fine. Um, Two two people recommend it. Um, you know, it's, it's even better uh, for anyone else. But let's jump in. Um, if you, again, if you're listening to us, watching us live on YouTube right now, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that helps us out as a channel to get to more people. So thank you for doing that. But we'll jump in first and foremost. One of the games I play uh, very frequently, Mike, is Fortnite, and I play this game because number one, it's free, and two, when I try to get other people to play games and they don't have to spend seventy dollars to play, they want to play too. So Fortnite is one of those games where you uh, everything is free and you get in that way and then you spend money on skins. But this week Disney has announced. Uh, was it their earning? Disney had an earnings call this week, I believe. Yeah, um, it was a quarterly earnings. Yes, quarterly earnings call, and they kind of uh, unveiled a bunch of stuff. But one of the things is a 1.5 billion dollar investment with Epic Games to create um, a new universe, a gaming universe within the Fortnite engine, if you will. And in this uh, trailer, uh, you can I clicked here. It takes you. It shows off properties uh, from Disney, such as Frozen, things such as Marvel, uh, Pixar, Star Wars, and the biggest thing is Avatar getting game uh, getting representation. And this, as well as its own little standalone uh, property, if you yeah, it's it's funny because when you hear like the what do you say one point five you billion. know billion dollar um, acquisition, it, it sounds like Investment. oh wow did Investment. did they did they buy like half of it? Is this like a, are they like a third owner or something? And then you're like, Oh no, uh, Fortnite's worth like, uh, multiple billions over billions of dollars. Yeah. I, I think I saw the work up that Disney owns roughly the same amount. I think Sony owns in it, like yeah. just a couple of a percentage, but still it's, it's more of the statement that it makes. Right. Of like, yeah. kind of like we're an official partner now. It's yeah. not like, Oh, we just happen to have the most popular IP, so we're going to be making licensing deals with Fortnite. Now it's like, oh no, we want a piece of the pie because Fortnite seems to have proven itself to be more than just a fly-by-night game or trend. And it's like, oh, this is like a platform that's sticking yeah. around. And, and to me, uh, the, at the end of the trailer, it kind of shows off the different worlds they're building, uh, different like standalone islands. And that's how Fortnite has launched this season. Like, there's regular Fortnite, there's Fortnite Festival, which is made by Harmonix, which is essentially a rock band. Uh, for, uh, ro- uh, Fortnite Racing, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, which is a racing game using the cars, kind of like Rocket League, which is also made by Epic, and then also Lego Fortnite, right? Lego, huge, huge investment, huge partnership there. 
uh, to get that done in their survival game mode. But at the end, it shows us these islands. So I see, you know, looking at this, I see Nightmare Before Christmas. I see Avengers. I see, um, it was a Big Hero 6, you know, Marvel, Lucasfilm, ESPN. Like, everything is in here. And what is cool about this is, is a couple things for me, Mike, is one, um, you know, it's... I, I, I'm not an NFT person and, and people who talk to me know this. I, I, I'm not into it. Don't don't get it. But the idea is if you can buy something digital and that persists across multiple digital games, I'm more into invested in this, right? Um, now, I'm not saying that it's necessarily NFTs, but if I buy an Avatar skin or a Marvel skin and I want to travel over to uh, Frozen World in this, I can play as those characters together, right, in this big world. Um, that way I don't have to, you know, get a different skin for every different games or, you know, my... My in-app digital purchases are only usable in one place. I can use them across multiple instances in, in Fortnite, if you will. Yeah, and it seems like the, the semi-permeable barrier between these uh, worlds will have rules to them because uh, we see the Frozen characters. I don't think we're going to be seeing Elsa with a gun uh, anytime soon or Olaf with like a rocket launcher or sniper rifle. So I think it's like, oh, if you have like a Captain America skin, you can, you know, go visit, you know, Toontown or, you know, whatever yeah. they end up making, right? But it's not going to be the other way around. It's, it's, and it's pretty it's pretty ingenious, right, of Fortnite uh, whipping up these other rule sets and just like uh, just different game it's, it's, sets as yeah. well. You it, know? And, and that's, that's part two of it. Part two is Fortnite um, slash Epic it's no longer just the Fortnite battle Royale modes, right? Like you're not doing battle Royale. There are other game types, other maps, other things you can do full on games and experiences in there that are not, you know, just shooting people and being the last person mm -hmm. remaining. So that I think is, you know, proving that Fortnite festival Lego and the racing are worked and are viable has, you know, I think has sold it to other companies. Like you don't want to build, you don't want to go to a third party to build a game. You want to be a part of, the, one of the biggest games already existing and, and, and take part in it. So to me, I, again, you know, people are like, Oh, I don't like Fortnite for kids. Well, this isn't regular Fortnite. This is going to be a gaming universe. You can play with your kids, right? Like you can be, like I said, there's ESPN. Maybe there's going to be sports games in here, right? People may make, you know, uh, some sort of you know, football, baseball, some sort of games. Uh, yeah. Well, side. there was a, there was a clip on the, the trailer of like lightning McQueen next to some other yep. vehicles that were like, jockeying for position so there could be like a a rocket league or like a racing simulator that, in there that is right that was rocket league if you look at it you can see rocket league in the back but exactly right like you're 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 not limited to shooting anymore like you mentioned there's not just guns you know you have you know powers and like you you know if you're playing with elsa and you can mix in with the, a, a marvel character and then you know, maybe you're doing an indiana jones temple heist run right more of a, a puzzler uh so to me this is great you know when when, when companies can can like make your purchases carry across different things digitally. That's what I'm about. And I'm, I'm excited for this. Now it may not launch for a few years. Now this isn't something they're like, Oh, we're, we're coming out soon. Um, but the investment means that both Disney and Epic see value in here. They're looking at the skins. They're looking at the, 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 the daily shop purchases right at the end of the day. But, uh, it's something I can jump in and play for free. I'm, I'm absolutely down for like, yeah. Um, and then, like, again, we've always talked about Avatar would be perfect in the Fortnite world or, like, video game world. Um, you know, Frontiers of Pandora, uh, you know, recently came out. So, you know, seeing Avatar here, I think, would be really, really fun uh, along the way as well. But um, check out that trailer in our show notes. Michael, any other notes you got on that? Because I, I'm, I'm strongly opinionated in Fortnite because it is, it is the game I, I play with my friends the most. I don't play it alone, but, like, I play with friends. So I didn't know if you had any, any extra thoughts. I mean, I would say it's there's few and far between times where I feel like I need to get on Fortnite and, you know, learn how to play the game and get more familiar with it. But it's things like this that start to kind of push me back into the fold of just like, oh, well, if I don't have to compete against 12 year olds that, you know, have like the best ADS stick movements in all the land, that would be great. So maybe this gets me back in there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 excited. So we'll we'll see if you get in there. And then uh, the other thing about Fortnite, and and I I, hate, I, I I want to mention this before we swap, is that it is the probably the most cross-platform game I've ever seen. Um, you right, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, it's Nintendo Switch. It's on mobile phones. It's on your computers. Mm -hmm. Anything anywhere you want to play Fortnite, you can. So that's pretty cool. I think to me at the end of the day, just if uh, we wanted to hop on and play, we don't have to have the same systems to do it. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty cool. 
All right, moving on to Disney's announcements. One of the uh, bigger announcements is from a uh, couple here from Lucasfilm. Uh, the first is the Mandalorian and Grogu movie uh, will be releasing May 22nd, 2026, Mike. So we're a little over two years away from it. Um, I was thinking it was going to be a 2025, but if they start later this year, polish it up for cinema, put it in May. May, May and December are, are Star Wars months. This seems pretty, pretty okay in my book. What do you think? Yeah. I, I feel like um, uh, last week they listened to me on the show and heard my ominous prediction of what if they mess up next year and everybody hates everything they do. Uh, they seem to come hard at this uh, quarterly earnings and really threw out some heavy hitters. And I, I think a weirdly the most uh, reassuring thing is seeing that year on there, 2026, mm -hmm. right? I feel like the previous regime of Disney would have been like 2026. No, no, no. End of 2024. We are fitting all of this every every quarter. We're maxing out as as much as we can. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to see that 26. Yeah, and I think that'll give them enough time to, again, the TV show. You can have you know small things here and there, right? Um, you, you you're more forgiving on a TV show, uh, in the ways it's produced. Making a movie of the scale again, they're gonna have to again. Hopefully, they build sets. They're not using the volume because that's, you know, for TV productions, not movie productions. I think this is going to be uh, a big win for them if it, if it goes off well. On the flip side, they also announced two other um, release dates for properties. Uh, December 18th, 2026, as a proper Star Wars movie, Mike, likely the Ray movie is the, the guess, right? Episode 10 or whatever they're going to call it um, down the road because it has been worked on the most and uh, announced the most. Followed by December 17th, 2027, which uh, people are guessing is going to be either the first Jedi film from James Mangold or Dave Filoni's movie uh, in that regard as well. So uh, to me, I'm more concerned the last time they released two movies in 20 in one year, a May and a December. Um, I think it went December, May, but maybe May, December is, was um, I think it was like solo, which is not a bad movie. People just didn't go see it. Uh, they were burned out on star Wars or, 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 you know, didn't feel it. So do you think, two movies in one year is still okay in this regard for star Wars because they're yeah. not, they're not the same. They're kind of one's yeah. a TV finisher. One's a real movie. Yeah. That's the only thing that kind of makes me feel a little bit better about it. Like we know Filoni is kind of the tip of the spear creatively now for everything star Wars, but it does kind of distinctly feel like two separate entities, right? Yeah. You know, you're pulling this creative team from like the Disney plus side of things. And then I'm sure you're going to have your more traditional, like movie pipeline, you know, putting together whatever this other, you know, if it's James mingled or whatever, yeah. uh, putting together. So it seems just more separated. Um, I'm kind of curious. It just makes me thinking kind of seeing a date kind of written out possibly for the Filoni movie. Does this mean 2027 is like the end of this Star Wars era, right? You know, now we can imagine the collector's box set that has all the seasons of like Mando and Boba Fett and Ahsoka in it. Mm -hmm. And it you know, ends off with that one movie. Like uh, that kind of weirdly feels like a sneaky era that they fit in that we we didn't imagine before right you know you could do like a mega box set and throw the clone wars in there as well right. but that seems like the your cardboard box is getting a little too long for uh most bookshelves but yeah it's kind of weird to think about it as an era all of a sudden it just f felt like this weird like experiment that they were doing that people seem to really like and now all of a sudden it's like a definitive yeah. part of star it's wars and it seemed like it almost came out of nowhere yeah, it's it's now written, right? Um, you know, but uh, twenty seven. When did when did Disney Plus launch officially? Was it twenty? Oh God, was it? It was before the pandemic, right? Yeah, I want to say. Um, let me see, Disney Plus twenty nineteen seems here. right. Yeah, I feel like it was October nineteen. Yeah, November twenty nineteen. So eight years to really kind of wrap that up. That's pretty good. I mean that that's a that's a solid run, right? Uh, you know, they're not all, um, they're not all winners uh definitely but you know it's a it's it'll feel good to have it all together at the end of the day i'd i'd still want a feloni box set. i think i think you, you've got me sold mike on this the idea <laughs> well of, i know i got uh, you so yeah, yeah and if we wrap all of those books in steel you're on top of yeah, it Yeah, <laughs> exactly uh i you know i i did not buy the mando seasons uh, one and two uh dvd release the 4k release that they, they dropped recently mm -hmm. i did not buy those um i don't know if i need to but um you know at the same time i i think it's it's cool but yeah once those dates are in there you know you're right like you know we're essentially ending an era with two movies and then kicking off another era 
with with the middle one. So, um, I don't think the first Jedi movie will be the twenty seven. James Mangold is also wrapped up with Swamp Thing in the DCU. Uh, so, um, I I think I think first Jedi is gonna be you know a, a big swing, but I don't think it's it. I think I think you are you are correct in thinking that it is Dave Filoni's movie there, uh, twenty twenty seven. Um, but it'll be really cool to see that all on Disney Plus. Uh, you know, one big like timeline, like the the Filoni timeline. Um, but anyway, the other thing that launched uh, or was announced yesterday is the Phantom Menace. Star Wars: The Phantom Menace is returning to theaters for its 25th anniversary. Mike, um, you know, to me, you know, I I remember the toy craze, the Phantom Menace, Star Wars craze of 1997, right? Um, uh, it, or nine was it 90, 99, 99. Uh, between 98 and 99, I remember that very vividly, right? Going to Taco Bell and seeing all the toys and like the data chip, mm-hmm. the data pad chips and all the toys, the lightsabers, everything. Um, so while, you know, it, you know, you can watch it on Disney plus, I might go to the theater to rewatch the Phantom Menace, Mike, to get that theatrical star Wars experience on this one day. Yeah. I mean, for us, we're, I mean, we're the generation that looks at the prequels as nostalgia and it could be positive nostalgia. It could be negative nostalgia, if that's even built into the definition of the word. Because we were just we were just kids when we saw them, and we we knew no better that we should have gotten better. Yeah. And I, I, I you're always talking about you know rose tinted glasses, and it feels like now that we're at the 25th anniversary, people are putting those glasses back on, and I'm seeing like these really endearing thoughts about the prequels come out. There was like a, a photo shoot that I saw just the other day of yeah. Hayden Christensen, like uh, reprising the photo of him. Uh, well, I guess it wasn't him, but the kid version of Anakin with the Vader shadow, yeah. like peeling out behind them and up the wall. Um, and I think the only reason uh, is because we have rehabilitated the image of those prequels with everything Dave Filoni has done, well, all... right, with uh, the Clone Wars. And to contrast that, the, the, the last Star Wars theatrical movie was so bad, anything else can be better than it. Yeah, that that's true. <laughs> and, like, honestly, if you, if you really sit with your feelings, you know, turn all the lights off, yeah. uh, close your eyes, and just really think about Star Wars, There, I think, honestly, there's more bad than there is good. Now, some of the good Star Wars is, like, legendary yeah. in filmmaking, and, you know, it can be held up on its own accord, but that is the it, truth of Star Wars. Well, there's it, just more bad than good. Well, there, there is, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of hours of content when you look at it, really, at the end of the day. Mm. I had, and not to mention books and toys and, obviously, the uh, Christmas special. But you know, for me, the Phantom Menace, I, and I was talking about this to go listen to the um, the soundtrack again in theaters, right? The Duel of oh, the Fates yeah. in theaters, seeing the, the reveal of the double blade <laughs> lightsaber. Is that what you're gonna say? Um, well, the the, mu- the music is always it's amazing. Like John yeah. Williams just like doesn't miss, and even not John Williams, even when they've brought in other composers, yeah. they have such an amazing inspirational source and base the work from like the the music in the mandalorian is amazing yeah. as well and that's not john williams so yeah. i can't remember the composer off yeah, the top of jo- my head uh jorgensen is it something jorgen yeah, the guy something black like, panther yeah, yeah it's, i feel like it's kind of got like a a sharp j in there or yeah. something that's in my yeah. recesses uh oh. but yeah there's there's always something amazing about any given star wars property because there's always great visual effects or, you know, yeah. music. And, and to but, me, yeah. you know, it's like I've got my home theater and I, I, would, I would gladly watch a, a very high def version at home. But I'm like, is this something about going to the theaters and, you know, hey, are they going to release a uh, Darth Maul head popcorn bucket for this? You know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but <laughs> the last time I did go see it actually in theaters was 2012 when they did the 3D remaster that they were going to do for all the movies and they – canceled mm-hmm. it after it was bought by disney but i did watch it um 13 years ago and i just think it'd be so cool to go back again um and just just see it in theaters um because yeah and i also remember i you know why i think in 97 remember when they re-released the the, the star wars remasters with those extra scenes in 97 mm-hmm. that i remember going to that too and there's just something about being in the theater seeing that huge screen and in, mm-hmm. in star wars so um yeah maybe i will maybe i won't guys check it out it'll be may 3rd 2024th, just in time for May the 4th be with you. Uh, moving on, let's, let's talk. We got some Marvel topics here for a little bit. First up, um, Marvel. So on this on this um, earnings call, um, Bob Iger, right? Am I, is that, am I on the right, yes. Bob? Uh, has confirmed mm-hmm. that Captain America, Brave New World, and Fantastic Four 
for 2026. He did not mention Blade or Thunderbolts, but I don't think those have the the keywords, the buzz, the draw, uh, as the other two movies do, if you say them so, out loud. But they they could still be there. They may be delayed. Who knows at this point? W- would that put Thunderbolts in 2025? Are we saying there's no Marvel movie confirmed for uh, 2025? I'm sorry. This is 25. I, it's a typo. It's 2025, not 2026. <laughs> I, 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 I had was, so many dates this week, Mike, uh, on this. I, I was, I was so going to say, man, those uh, yeah. those uh, they built in a lot yeah. of reshoots for Brave New World yeah. if this ain't coming out until yeah, 2026. Bra- no, Brave New World uh, and, and Fantastic Four are next year. Um, he did not mention Blade or Thunderbolts, but you know those are still on the release calendar for coming out next year um, with Thunderbolts it, it filming is, soon. It is so wild to see Fantastic Four with a release date. Like mm-hmm. I was just, I was imagining so much of a different landscape out there for Marvel when the Fantastic Four finally hit the big screen. But if these kind of rumors bubbling around out there are correct that this is going to be like a period piece in some way, yeah. you know, they might not have to root it so much in a current timeline, you know, set the pieces up so the Fantastic Four can, you know, all of a sudden be in like the Avengers Tower or whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that's what the tower is there for, right? You know, mm-hmm. it could easily be Oscorp, but... um if they do that big, also that was a big like fan theory too. Back, I think it was Movie Bob that kind of maybe pitched it for the first time or right. recorded it first for the internet of like, oh, what if they're like vintage, like you know, nineteen fifties or sixties scientists, and then they, you know, they get thrown through some sort of like time hole or something. Yeah, and land yeah, up. they're always dealing with science stuff, right? They can be dimensional. Yeah. They can be in. They could be doing trips in space because Fantastic Four are known for their adventures in space. Mm. Like, you know, there's tons of ways to make it a period piece and bring it forward. But like, to me, you know, we, we have nothing confirmed wink, wink next topic. Uh, but you know, you're right. Like they are, they are lean Bob Iger, at Disney, they are leaning on brands and the two brands are leaning on next year. Uh, so far, you know, not Blade and Thunderbolts could be there. They could be great. They could be, you know, good movies, but Captain America as a, as a flag, especially with Harrison Ford in it, and then Fantastic Four, right? The people, the movie people want to see so hard. So um, it, it, to me, it's like, yes, we're going to say the movies people want to hear that will be flagged, and you'll see articles everywhere. You're not getting a lot of clicks on Thunderbolts because nobody nobody knows what Thunderbolts is. You ask your mom, Mike, the, the, our thermometer for this, what the Thunderbolts are, and she's going to be very confused. Um, <laughs> I, I like that, the thermometer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, barometer is probably what I was looking for, right? Um, but uh, Blade as well. You know, a lot of people know Blade. Oh, Wesley Snipes. No, not Wesley Snipes. We talk about this. We live in this every every week. We know what it is, but the average person probably not picking up on it, right? Um, they're like, why does Wesley Snipes need another movie? He hasn't been in it since early 2000s, and it was awful. So uh, they're leaning on that. But let's talk Fantastic Four because SAG – has done a boop, uh, an oopsie, if you will, Mike. A, a little <laughs> little thing. Their SAG after a highlight um, thing for uh, Pedro Pascal. Uh, the sheet revealed he is filming Fantastic Four this year. Uh, so, whoops. I guess this was confirmed. Out of the bag. I mean, it's big casting, right? I yeah. mean, Pedro Pascal, he is. I mean, he's at the height of his powers. Uh, it sounds like there are new heights in store for him. It makes sense to grab him while you can. He always ha- he already has the relationship with Disney. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure The Last <laughs> of Us uh, Part Two is going to increase his notoriety even more. Yeah, uh, he won't be that... under that helmet in, in Mandalorian movie either, so he's got free time. Yeah, so <laughs> he's gonna. I mean, this is a good. This is a good place for him to. To lay his hat and cash some big old fat checks. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I mean, to me, you know, overall, I would love to see him be, you know, I, I can't make a judgment on his Mr. Fantastic yet based on anything I've seen him in, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, so yeah, it does. Yeah, it does make me wonder what approach is he going to bring to the role? You know, I guess it depends on what they want to do with the character yeah. over time. But I feel like most, I mean, actually, no. Pedro Pascal has been a lot of different characters. I feel like I'm only encapsulating in the stuff I've seen him in recently, which has been very gruff. Mm. Like nothing's more gruff oh. than uh, Joel, Joel yeah. and Din Djarin. But he was straight up 
wacky in Wonder Woman 84. Like, he has, I think yeah. he's got the range to he, do more than just uh, well, surly. I, I need him to be, yeah, I think I think he has range. I've just not seen him be smart, if that makes sense, right? Wonder Woman 84 was not a smart role. Uh, the increasingly, or the, what was it, incredible weight of massive talent. It, well, he was not a smart role. Uh, Kingsman 2, not a smart role. Uh, I, I believe he has range. I've just not seen him in that scientific person that we need Reed, uh, Reed Richards to be, right? Like we want someone geeky, someone brainy, someone who is thinking science all the time. Um, you know, uh, one of one of my favorite lines from the actual comics that led up to the reboot of Secret Wars, which is what the movie will be on, is that, you know, Reed and then his um, daughter Valeria, their, their, their goal in that uh, when the world is about to end and is like, he's like, our, we cannot win anymore. Our goal is to not lose. Uh, and that's how he thinks. I think that's a really awesome statement and how they probably need to approach this Reed Richards in, in Marvel, right? We don't have Tony Stark anymore. We need someone super sciencey on that, on that regard. So, um, I'm fine with this. This is great. I, I'm not, I'm not knocking it. I just don't know any, I can't, I can't put a, put my thumb on what it would be like. So I'd love, I'd love to see it uh, when it comes out. Yeah. We're, we're excited. Yes. Uh, moving on, we're going to be in some, a little minor spoiler territory, Mike. Uh, not nothing, nothing huge, but uh, Daredevil: Born Again is filming, and when you're filming out in the streets of New York, guess what? You get to see costumes uh, in high res. Uh, so I've got a high res look at uh, Charlie Cox in his Daredevil: Born Again suit here on the street. And while we always put a big asterisk, seeing people in suits for Marvel properties does not mean that's how they'll look in. Uh, the movie this gives us that he's going back to his red and black suit, right? The yellow one mm -hmm. was for She-Hulk, red and black coming back for Born Again. So it always feels like there's a lot of room in like the pants, in, yeah. in a sense of like they always seem like really baggy, which is yeah. kind of the opposite you think of superheroes. But when you're filming like these action scenes, you got to be able to move, yeah. which <laughs> requires uh, costumes different than what you would see. Uh, in a comic yeah. book, but the, there's a, a video that you also shared here uh, in our show notes, and like uh, people are getting really close to this set, man. This is yeah. just like a a nicely filmed, just like <laughs> video from somebody's phone. Someone's it's like a on whole, the corner. I mean, like, like a whole action scene. Yeah. yeah. So um, in this one, we get to see Daredevil tackling Bullseye in uh, his Bullseye suit. Now, normally when you think of Bullseye, you think Black White has a, a big target on his head, right? Um, mm -hmm. In this situation, uh, they're using a more modern bullseye, uh, who's actually, I think, on the Thunderbolts team, where he is more of a hitman style look, right? Something you would see maybe mm -hmm. like a Sam Fisher or or a, a hitman style suit here uh, with this stuff. Uh, I like the purple. I think the purple is very contrasty. I like it better than the black and white. It contrasts the Daredevil red a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, but that yeah, like that clip is very very close, and you can you can check this stuff out here. Um, I don't think it gives anything away, but I'm very excited that they're, they're filming this and then and moving, moving on, uh, if you will. Uh, speaking of Marvels, uh, so the Marvels, the Marvels, the movie is now on Disney Plus. Mike, I don't, uh, it came out uh, this week, so if you have not caught the Marvels in theaters, you can now catch it on uh, Disney Plus with your subscription that you probably have uh, after you get done watching Bluey. Uh, kids are bad, you can pop over to the Marvels. <laughs> uh, they also, again, with this, they have the IMAX version. Remind you, most Marvel movies have an IMAX version you can select before you click play. So if you want to catch the IMAX version, get that full screen on your TV. Check that out. With this, though. Every time a new property is added to Disney Plus for Marvel, they always add in an updated timeline. So you can go to the playlist, which uh, is one of my favorite features of Disney Plus, and see the movies in the orders they're, they take place in, not the order they're released in, right? Uh, that, that's important for some of these movies, uh, at least the ones that are available. The only movie not available on here is Spider-Man No Way Home. So with that, they now have uh, two playlists, Mike. They've added the MCU movie timeline, which is just the movies. So for the average viewer... Uh, such as uh, most people who probably just want to click play or, or check the movies, they can do that. Uh, but that, but with that, they also added the MCU complete timeline. And this is, uh, I've, I've actually linked it here, so you can see this uh, in here. From Marvel, officially, .com, they have added the Netflix shows to this timeline, Mike. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, they are take place in, in terms of when they were released compared to the other movies, because I did cross-check all these releases. So, um Obviously, you get Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Defenders, and The Punisher in here. 
to watch uh, as well as everything else. So they've moved things around. One of the biggest things that's here, uh, you know, in terms of the timeline, if, if anyone is interested, is Echo uh, takes place right after um, uh, what kind of forever, so closer to Hawkeye, uh, not not uh, down the timeline a little bit. And then um, uh, Loki season two and What If season two are the most recent because they they kind of tie together with the multiverse saga, if you will. Yeah. It is so funny to see the Marvels here right after Secret Invasion mm -hmm. because uh, just totally different Nick Fury. Nick Fury is not the right? same in this, that, yeah. Like, it's just absolutely so disjointed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, I, you know, um, for, for those people who are like, oh, I, you know, do I, uh, if I want to watch things, you know, what do I need to catch up on? Uh, this this is now it. This is, this is your full release. I'm glad they split it because there's so much stuff, so much TV mm -hmm. shows in here and mike you know me i am i am a person who takes pride in my playlists on plex uh thoroughly so when this came out guess what it screwed up all my playlists uh for marvel <laughs> because i had been doing a complete timeline on mc marvel cinematic universe timeline well you know when they add in you know these netflix shows uh produce shows which are the marvel shows now but they were on netflix first what has happened is i cannot add those into the timeline i have to add them to the place and move them around individually each episode and um, mm -hmm. that's a lot of episodes when you look at 13 per season they did on Netflix. But I've, I've compiled it together. I just I just nuked it, started over. My new list, this is over 10 days straight of Marvel content if you wanted to <laughs> watch this uh, in a row. So, And the, and the movies are, are uh, under three days alone. So I, I think this is wild to, to put them in here. But great because now you have one home to go check them all out at, uh, if you will. So... Um, but check out that link in here. Uh, I've linked it directly from marvel.com uh, in our show notes if you want to see that timeline. Uh, moving on to Deadpool. Why, why are we talking about Deadpool, Mike? Because uh, two things. One, we have a new image uh, promo showing them uh, them suited up from, from the team here. I like this artwork style. I, I don't know about you. The, the harsh, harsh light um, on them a little bit, casting shadows. What do you think? Yeah, they. I just. It's nice seeing uh, these two characters side by side with those kind of white eyes, right? Yeah. You know, we're just not used to seeing Hugh Jackman in the, in the cow, if you will. So they just. They look. They just look like buds, don't they? Yeah, and you got obviously cheeky Deadpool and and serious Wolverine. Mm -hmm. I like the wings and the Wolverine outfit. Uh, like the the mask where they kind of curve up and backwards a little bit. They really, mm -hmm. really kind of kind of brought those to life, really, really well. Um, and then uh, you know, do you want so. Obviously, it wasn't was it the it wasn't the Grammys. It was a Saturn Awards. Marvel won an award this this week. Kevin Feige is wearing a Daredevil hat or Deadpool hat uh, there, and on the back, uh, it's got the title. People couldn't see it from a distance, but that someone has supposedly um, got it out. And guess what they they think it's called, Mike? Any any ideas? Is it just is it just Deadpool and Wolverine? <laughs> it's Deadpool and friend, Deadpool and oh, friend, and friend in in Wolverine font. Uh, which, which kind of fits with that. I think that's pretty funny uh, for Deadpool, right? Yeah. Like they, they're being very cheeky with this title, but I think we're going to get the release today uh, during a Super Bowl spot. We're probably going to get a Super Bowl spot. Um, yeah, it, it seems obvious, and if you're listening to the show, you probably have already seen it, and we'll talk about it on next week's show. But I think it might be fun if we want to add a little bit of extra – uh, uh, surprise and a delight to the show. Chris, do you have any predictions on the trailer itself? Just any one thing that a listener right now could determine if you are right or wrong right off so the bat, because they already know. <laughs> uh, my guess is that this movie is going to start with, uh, or this trailer is going to be Deadpool just doing something completely mundane. Like, like we're okay. like, he's got like, it might, like the thing with Deadpool is like, you know, the first leak was him sitting on a coloring on top of a, a an overpass, right? Remember that when okay. that leak came out and that came out? Mm -hmm. He's going to be doing some, completely, something completely mundane that you were like, oh, this is what a normal person would do, but he's doing like a little bit of a Deadpool spin on it. Like um, mm -hmm. he's either like, maybe he's pressure washing a house or like doing a car salesman kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, it, just something real every day, if you will. Um, on the first, yeah, to, to, to kick it off, what do you think? I think I think that the stinger at the end of the trailer is going to be some sort of shot of a collection of other Deadpools. Mm -hmm. Like I think for certain we're going to see Dogpool yeah. and like maybe two other Deadpools as well and then he'll make some sort of uh joke about I don't know having like an orgy with all of himself or yeah. something like that, but that'll be like the shot. 
I don't think they'll reveal any uh, extra characters, you know, outside of Wolverine that I'm sure will appear in the movie and it'll be a surprise. But um, I would be disappointed if the only reveal is Wolverine, Hugh Jackman. Uh -huh. I feel like that's almost pretty I... well known because it's been leaked yeah. all over the Internet. Uh, well, I would say the back half of my trailer is going to be the opposite of yours, where it's not Deadpool variants. It is the cameos. They're gonna they're gonna blast us in the face with so many of the cameos that we've okay. reported on for the past year, year and a half. Um, we're gonna see so many familiar faces, and that's how they're gonna sell it yeah. to everybody else. Like I could see that happening for sure, but I think it would be in the next trailer because I think yeah. this is gonna be like quote unquote what they call a teaser mm -hmm. trailer, which is totally lost all meaning. But the, I think the first official trailer will have mm -hmm. all of the cameos in yeah. my in my guess. See, I think the teaser is the cameos, and the first trailer is the plot of the movie. Uh, so I'm gonna lean. I'm gonna you know we're both probably gonna be wrong because that's how it works on the show. Uh, but I'm gonna lean the other way. But I think. The, the, the rumor is um, Disney has bought a, about a two-minute spot for this, up to two and a half minutes. So we're going to get a full trailer during the show, Mike. Uh, it's it, our full-length teaser, full-length trailer. It's not going to be a 15 or 30-second, hey, go watch the trailer online. Like, because the best part is you're listening and you know right now you have yeah. so much more information than uh, yeah. past Sunday morning Chris and Mike have. Yeah, boy, did we, were we, were we wrong? Were we wrong? Uh, <laughs> we hindsight. But uh, that's it. I'm excited for this. This is, uh, this is a high on my list for things to catch today. So uh, my guess is it's going to be at the start of the Super Bowl too, Mike. They always do the Marvel trailers early on. They're not waiting for halftime uh, for it. In the DC world, I only got a little bit of news today uh, because Creature Commandos uh, is, in the, is in the news with Sean Gunn, brother of James Gunn, saying the series will release this fall on the Mac streaming service. And I would take his word on it because, A, he's a brother of James Gunn, boom. Uh, <laughs> and, two, he's voicing both G.I. Robot and Weasel, uh, his character in Suicide Squad, in this show. So I think he's got a little bit of information that we would not have at the end of it. Yeah, he seems like a uh, not quite a primary source, but... Uh... Uh, genetically related to the primary source. Yeah, someone who talks to the primary source probably uh, more than anybody else, right? Uh, on the unless you unless you know how to tag him in uh, threads, you can get on that the, the James Gunn social media account threads. Uh, unless you're on Vero with, with Zack Snyder, because like every you know big director has like their own social media platform at this point. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I think uh, I think we'll we'll trust we'll trust what Sean says and tell you guys more when this is more officially revealed the last two topics here we have are paramount plus related mike and the first one is knuckles the six episode event series uh, announced from paramount this is probably announced beforehand i totally missed it i just saw the the trailer for this knuckles show which is essentially uh follows knuckles from his reveal in sonic 2 and features the returning voice of idris elba as knuckles as he's just trying to um maintain life on earth I guess it looks like after the second movie. So uh, I did not know this was coming. I did not know they were doing a Knuckles TV show. As you mentioned, they're filming Sonic three uh, shadow, the hedgehog right now. So I, it could have easily been part of that and we missed it along the way. Yeah. It seems like this is um, like, I'm just kind of picking up on the story from the trailer. This is kind of like an archetype. I would say that I like, I don't hate when there's like a uh, there's like a big uh, tough guy that you know takes no gruff from anybody, which would be Knuckles, and you pair him up with kind of like a uh, like a whiny baby. And I don't know who this character is. I don't know if they've been introduced in any other way in the previous film. Uh, but he looks like a whiny soft baby, and I like the idea of like Knuckles uh, toughening him up. Yep. It, it's just it's just funny. It's like a scenario you would never imagine. Like if somebody described the series to me. Uh, be like, oh, not only would you guess that there's going to be two live-action uh, Sonic movies, Knuckles is getting a spin-off where he's just, like, a roommate, and he, like, turns yeah. the living room into, that's, like, a fighting den. That's exactly <laughs> how Sonic the Knuckles the game is, right? It's a game cartridge, it's a game, but you can plug in other games, and then you can play as Knuckles in those games. So <laughs> this is essentially they're bringing the game idea to life over Paramount+. Plus. But, you know, I, I agree with you. You, know, you have Knuckles, who is not who's the opposite of Sonic, who's fast, happy-go-lucky, you know, really, you know, um, 
he's essentially Goku, if you will. Sonic is Goku, and this is Vegeta. We're getting the Vegeta. That's true. Show. That, you, you got it right. Yeah. Uh, so we're getting the Vegeta show where he's like, no, you, uh, we, you know, I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior race. You know, you have to build yourself up. I'm not going to help you along the way. And that's essentially what he's doing here. Uh, and then his sidekick is Mr. Satan, if you will. The the crybaby is his Mr. Satan along the way. So I've done my Dragon Ball connection for the day, Mike. I feel happy about <laughs> this. But overall, um. It appears to be a premium event series, right? It looks just as the same as the movie would do. They have, obviously, the, the Knuckles model. Uh, they were able, to, again, to get the voice actor to return. They didn't get an offhand voice actor for the show. And it'll probably set up events for, for Sonic 3 along the way as well. Um, is, is it, is it going to make you want to watch Sonic 2, knowing there's more of this stuff coming from Paramount? I mean, honestly. I'm- there's a lot of Sonic uh, dropping in that uh, that jury duty show, so it, it feels like everything around me is telling me to watch these Sonic movies finally. So I, I really enjoyed will, the first one. See. Yeah, I I think this is something. You know, I know you're a big you you watch stuff while you're working out, Mike. This might be something a workout mm-hmm. show or workout movie for you. Uh, yeah, to catch. it could make me go faster on the elliptical. Absolutely, you've got kids. Kids are going to get into Sonic one day. You've got to prepare for this. They're everywhere. So. <laughs> Yeah, I got I gotta watch them to make sure that they're uh, that they're suitable for my future. Child. I don't think you're gonna have any worry about that at all. I think it'd be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, check it out. Um, this is Paramount Plus. Uh, you know, obviously that's it. The other thing uh, from Paramount Plus that dropped this week, and I was I, I actually forgot to tell you this, um, so I thought it would actually have been in the thumbnail instead of Knuckles, and that's Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the first trailer for the show, giving us the art style and kind of story style. For the show, uh, which is confirming that stylized 2D animation that we theorized it would be telling stories about the the turtles in school. Yeah, I watched this, almost made the thumbnail, but I was uh, lazy and uh, Photoshop isn't always uh, the best at automatically clipping out uh, 2D animation. It gets confused with some of the solid lines. It's all of its algorithms yeah. are built around like more uh, 3D forms. So I had like a couple ideas, but couldn't quite get it to fit. But I, I think this is a good way to just bring in, like, it feels like Paramount Plus, they're trying. You know, they're putting in their best college try right now. They got the Super Bowl. I don't know if their contract continues into next year at all. But, no, like, it's, uh, each, okay. Each network has it. CBS has it this year. And that's why it's on Paramount okay. Plus. So it's just like, okay, we got Paramount Plus. We got this Knuckles trailer. We got Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. These were both premiered on the big screen, and we're bringing them to our small screen. Uh, <laughs> Halo Season 2, I heard, was not good. No, and I, I doubt- I heard, I'm, I'm the other way. Halo Season 2 is way better than the first season. Way oh, I, I've, I heard bad I, things well, about it. That's so. fine. I've watched it, so you can hear all you want. I wa- I've watched the first two episodes. It's way better than the first season. It's more... Covenant more elites more into the battles than the first season was. Well, like, you got to come back here. Yeah, you got to come back here after you finish it, so we can get a yeah. definitive ruling. So, well, if, okay, let's continue with with your um, yeah. with your current uh, floating review of like, okay, Halo is uh, turning they, into a franchise for them over that. This this could be the moment in history if Paramount Plus becomes something bigger than what it is now. Yeah. This could be the starting point of it all because I do like the effort, right? I loved um, I love Mutant Mayhem, so the fact that they're bringing it to the small screen is fun. Uh, the trailers had, had a lot of energy to it. It seemed like all of the voice cast is returning, which is where almost all of that charm came from. And then yep. add in the unique creative art style from the film that just made it pop off even more. I mean, the 2D animation is a is a bit of a letdown only because I love the 3D style they developed for the feature film. Yeah. But I think they're also doing something creative here with the 2D animation. They're being very loose. It feels like something, uh, it seemed like every panel is something that a high school kid, you know, would like yeah. draw in their like college ruled notebook, you know, in between classes. So it still kind of has that fun energy and vibe to it. So I'm, I think I'll check this out. Yeah, I, I, I think they're doing two seasons and, you know, small series. And I think this is – there's not a lot of weight on this. Like, I'm going to watch it, but it's not going to deter if, – if if I'm like, I don't like the first episode, it's not going to deter me from watching the second uh, movie because they're they're, they're mm-hmm. kind of different, right? Like you mentioned visually different, you know, the, the effort putting in. But I also think if they had done the 3D, we wouldn't have it this year. We would not be watching Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in 3D and getting the movie. We would just be getting the movie next. Um, mm-hmm. So the fact they were able to get the voice actors and turning this around in like a 2D thing to me is pretty cool. I, I think it's interesting. I, I, I hate to bring it back to Fortnite, but Fortnite is doing a Turtles crossover right now, Mike. So Turtles are huge in Fortnite. Like you can buy all four Turtles. 
there's a Shredder event. April and Splinter are on the map. You can talk to them. Um, no, Sonic is back from that. Like, why 90s things that from our childhood right now, right, Mike? Early <laughs> 90s are, are getting a huge push on Paramount. Are they leaning into that nostalgia era? The 30 the the 30 plus year olds right you know early 40s you know, you know people are now coming to this because oh the things i watched as a kid my kids can watch or i can watch with them along the way um on, on paramount plus i think it's so weird to imagine that my child is going to have nostalgia for avatar uh-huh. the blue universe the blue alien universe yeah. not the uh not the animated nickelodeon no you already show. got yeah, well they might you know, who knows the <laughs> netflix show might be part of their you know the, the third season while they're a small child they can get into it it's just wild they're they're gonna have their own podcast in the future they're gonna be having the same discussions that we're ha- time is a flat circle yeah. the only thing that changes is the ip our future children talk about on the microphone i was so, gonna say uh, the graphic fidelity <laughs> but turtles is going back to 2d animation which is what we watched i mean we, uh, uh, we talked offline in our in our group chat uh, earlier this week about how uh james cameron has more ideas past his original run of avatar but you know he expects that if that was to come to fruition he would hand it off to like a different creative team a different director so that means like kids in the future they'll be talking about like oh no i like the cameron avatar stuff better and be like oh no i liked um i i don't know does um does donald glover uh (laughs) become uh, an old season director and does he start directing like the second half of avatar it's just like what a weird timeline we live in it's 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 there's a lot there's a lot going on but back to the topic here i think with all eyes on paramount plus this today right watching the super bowl um mm-hmm. that is why they're putting their best foot forward right now right that is why they're like hey we've got stuff coming we've got eyes watching this we're gonna have our own commercials on here our own ads go for it um i i've actually had it up behind me before we re- loaded just making sure all everything was signed in and they're really pushing mission impossible fallout right now because you can stream it on there too so um, mm-hmm. We'll see if we get any. You know, hopefully they get some some signups and they can you know keep it keep it rolling. Uh, I'm just praying their servers hold up. Uh, there's going to be so many people yeah. uh, attacking those today. I let's let's hope uh, the Deadpool yeah. trailer uh, streams smoothly live yeah. into our televisions today. Ex- exactly. I mean they got. I mean normally it'd just be normal football people watching, but now they've got the Swifties watching. Mike, that's an extra mm-hmm. couple. Uh, couple million on there that would not normally be watching the super bowl true so, true so, true true so we'll see but um yeah so i gotta go get the velveta cheese in the crock pot mike so i'm gonna get going working on my snacks for the show let's get out of here and come back next week talk about the trailers but if people want to know what you're up to what you're doing where can they find you at buddy oh they can read my web comics at liferewardsrisk.com or pickledcomics.com chris if people want to catch up with you where are you I am on Instagram, Valdan87, V-A-L-D-A-N, uh, or Video Game Systems of the same name. If people want to know about the show, where they can get all these show notes, check out that calendar. I need to update with all these Star Wars dates. Where can they get all that goodies at? Oh, all you got to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find everything we do here on the show, and you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts like our own. You can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Obviously, it seems like you've already watched the Super Bowl. So what commercial or trailer was your favorite? Are you the most excited for? We're going to be all talking about it next week. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, and we love our super fans. So if you want to be a super fan of this show, it's so easy to do. All you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every week, folks. That's right. We'll catch you guys next week.